Hello everyone, my name is James. The story that I'm going to tell you concerns my uncle. This story goes back to his childhood around 70 years ago when he was around 10 years old. They were orphaned since childhood and had never seen their father. There were three sisters and an old mother in the family. It, their residence was in a secluded village and there was a pond nearby where they fished for a living. They caught a large quantity of fish one day and were so excited that they abandoned some of their important possessions beside the pond. For a poor family, there could hardly be a better event than the amount of fish they caught every week. But their delight was heightened when they caught so many fish in one day that they couldn't contain their enthusiasm. When they got home from selling the fish, they were happy. However, they quickly realized that they missed some important goods beside the pond. They wanted to go back but their mother strongly discouraged them. Because the pond was known for claiming one life each year, the mother was able to stop them for the time being, but the nagging concept in their thoughts was that if they didn't reclaim their possessions now, someone else would come along and take them in the morning. As I already stated, they were brave folks. They waited for everyone to fall asleep, and after midnight, when everyone in the house was sound sleeping, they returned to the pond. Imagine a ten-year-old youngster, the main breadwinner in the family, walking alone to the abandoned pond at midnight, while the entire town is silent. It would require enormous guts to strengthen his resolve. Little did he realize that this night would permanently alter his life. He crept out of the house and approached the pond. After some searching, he recovered his items. They chose to return home with a smile. He thought to himself, my mother said this pond claims a life every year, but nothing happened to me. They had no idea that the events that followed would completely alter the course of their existence. As they were returning home, they heard a weird and unexpected sound in a language they had never heard before. They suspected it was their mind playing tricks on them. As they continued, a severe wind and storm broke out. They could tell that something weird was going on. However, being bold, they reasoned, if everyone has to die one day, does it matter whether it happens today or tomorrow? Suddenly they heard a voice stop. They answered in a loud voice that they would not stop since they had very little time. As they continued on, a big black snake crossed their path. However, their immediate objective was to return home. Again, they heard the voice repeat, stop, I'm telling you to stop. But they kept strolling, singing to themselves. The voice cautioned them once again, Stop, or I will kill you. They said in a resolute tone, Everyone has to die someday. If you kill me today, what's new in that? Strange things were happening as they traveled. A black snake and a black-eyed cat would sometimes cross their way. Then the voice informed them that many people were terrified and asked for their lives, but I spared no one. I've never seen a young child as fearless as you are. What are you composed of? One day, you will do everything you never thought possible. And today, my uncles are successful businessmen. When they told me this story, it sent shivers down my spine, and they encouraged me to never give up hope, no matter how difficult the situation. Hey everyone, let me tell you about this insane night that happened not too long ago. So out of the blue, my family had to run away for an unanticipated reason, leaving me at home alone. It was late at night, and I said, Okay, I'll just relax and watch some TV. Consider this. I'm alone at home, with only the TV for company. Now, here's the kicker. My family had to leave at night for whatever reason, and guess who was stuck holding down the fort? Yes, yours truly. I'm talking about a night when the home was as silent as a library at midnight. Just myself some nibbles and the glow of the television screen. I started flicking stations all ready for a relaxing night in, when suddenly things began to become peculiar. The lights in the room began to flicker erratically and the television, my primary source of amusement, decided to join in by becoming all fuzzy. Now, in the calm seclusion of my house, I found myself straining to hear what appeared to be hushed murmurs as if someone unseen was conversing. I mean, it's only me here, right? The entire scene felt weird, 
and a sense of anxiety came in as I attempted to make sense of these unexplained events. I brushed it aside, believing I was simply being scared, but suddenly the room became really chilly, not in the pleasant way, more like a freezer. I thought, okay, this isn't normal. I decided to check out the remainder of the home, and as I go, doors began slamming shut on their own. The floor creaks harder, and I get a peculiar weighty sense, like if the house is watching me. Suddenly, footsteps followed me, but no one was there. It's only getting weirder. When I returned to the living room, the images on the wall began to shake as if they had taken on a new life. I'm hearing whispers and experiencing a bad atmosphere, and I swear I'm not alone. Then the TV goes crazy, broadcasting images of me in the home, appearing terrified. I never recorded such material. Even when I turned off the television, the murmurs and footsteps became louder. Lights go out, it's pitch black, and I hear a deep voice say, You're not alone. That night, overwhelmed by an unpleasant dread, I escaped my house, yearning for safety. The disturbing occurrences from earlier stayed in my mind as I slowly returned, my footfall echoing in the poorly lighted street. The road outside was covered in an unnerving calm, broken only by the distant buzz of lamps. As I walked along the walkway, my pulse beating, I unexpectedly saw my parents approaching me. Their expressions were a mix of relief and anxiety, having returned owing to an important problem. I had no idea that the night would be full of unexpected twists and turns. I indicated towards the house in a shaky voice, and my parents were perplexed, exclaiming, Son, this isn't our home. It has been abandoned for years. How did you get here? As I struggled to make sense of the events of that fatal night, the epiphany hit me like a flood of uncertainty.